Welcome everybody to Anatomy and Physiology 1. The course code for this is BIO, B-I-O, 101. This is a completely online course that is asynchronous. It is online because everything, including lecture and lab, will be done at home. There will, there will be no required times for you to be on campus. It's asynchronous because there is no scheduled meetings for you and I to be doing anything online. Uh, you will just have due dates and everything will be, uh, I'll be sending emails and you'll just have to set up a schedule of when to do these items. It doesn't matter when you take the exams or when you uh, do your studying. Uh, it could be three o'clock in the morning, could be seven o'clock in the morning, could be 10 o'clock at night. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's what means uh, asynchronous. My name is Dr. Gamaro. So this is me. I'm, uh, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology. I'm going to uh, leave this uh, PowerPoint away for a moment, and I want to actually talk to you uh, actually in person. So give me a moment. Hey, here I am. Uh, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology. The three of us here uh, welcome you. Uh, a little bit about uh, myself, uh, and I'll be asking you uh, about yourselves when you do the uh, entering survey, which I'll explain in a little bit. Um, I basically, I was born and raised in New Jersey. I was born in Belleville, very close to Newark. Um, and then when I was about eight years old, I moved up to Sussex County, where I basically kind of grew up. I did go back to Newark. Uh, you know, friends and family were over there, I guess. Um, but I was basically raised in uh, Sussex, Sussex County. I did my undergraduate work at Ohio University, uh, where I majored in pre-med zoology. Then I entered uh, medical school in the Caribbean island of Grenada. And we, I did four years in medical school. The first two years were done in the Caribbean islands. Uh, that was more book work, stuff that you're basically doing now where you're sitting down in the class, you're learning about anatomy, physiology, microbiology, whatever, and taking notes. Uh, the last two years of medical school was what we considered as the clinical years, where whatever we learned during the first two years, we get to practice on uh, patients in hospitals. Uh, and I did the uh, at least one and a half of my uh, clinical years in England and, uh, you know, worked in the hospitals over there, uh, learned a lot of um, hands-on things that, uh, that America doesn't do. So I brought back that stuff from my own knowledge and my experience over there. Also saw uh, what socialized medicine was and uh, it's just, uh, I've seen both sides of socialized medicine. It just doesn't work, uh, but that's another talk for another time. Um, so anyway, I did uh, my last six months of uh, clinical years in New York and New Jersey, at different hospitals there. And then I entered the field of obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, so I did that for a number of years, uh, became the chief resident, uh, delivered 3000 babies. <laughs> uh, I lost count after that. And um, then there was things happening after that. Um, my, I had to get knee surgery. My mother had a stroke. She's driving him back to usual. Um, but she, um, so this, this was a time where I needed to step back and do take care of those personal items. Um, and, and it was during this time that I was seeing medicine changing. Um, I don't want to get too much into it. And it wasn't what I signed up for. Uh, I worked with radiologists. I worked with um, uh, physical therapists, nurse practitioners, uh, other doctors, physician assistants. I worked with all of the medical professionals, um, occupational therapy and so forth, um, and nurses, of course. So I know the things that you will be needing to do later on. Most of you, if not all of you, are going into the medical realm. Um, and I'm going to show you how to apply some of this stuff. Anyway, on with my little story. Um, so I took care of my knee. My mother was getting better. 
I was wondering what else could I do with my medical degree? And one uh, one person mentioned to me, well, what about teaching? Um, I never thought about doing teaching. I said, oh, all right, I'll give it a try. Well, here I am about 17 years later, still doing this and enjoying it. I mostly teach anatomy and physiology. I do teach biology. Pathophysiology is one of my favorite courses, which is basically diseases. Um, microbiology, I've also taught medical terminology, but I'm more of the biological sciences. So that's a little bit about uh, me and why I'm doing this, and, but I needed to relocate. Uh, I got married and it was easier for me to, to uh, relocate to Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. I started teaching over there as well. And that's where I am right now is in Boston. But I, I'm trying to give back to the community too. I'm getting to the point where, like I said, I've dealt with so many different medical professionals. I know what you're going to be going through. I know the, the objectives that you're going to have to do. I've been keeping up with um, the radio tech and the nursing and other um, uh, institutions and seeing how things are progressing. Um, I've, I've noticed, for instance, the nursing, they just changed the, uh, um, the NCLEX. The NCLEX is the licensure exam that you do right after nursing school. But the NCLEX has changed April of 2023, um, where they're doing a lot more clinical stuff. There's a part there where a patient comes in. And not, a, I mean, on computer wise, a uh, patient comes in, what's the first thing you want to do? Um, what are the signs and symptoms that you're picking up with? Um, it's, uh, and also what's the first line of treatment that you're doing? But I want you to know that things are changing. I mean, they're, ha they're expecting nurses to do um, a little bit of diagnosing. Uh, you know, you have to pick up signs and symptoms. Are these side effects of a medication or is this a side effect of a certain um, disease? So it's going that way. So what I'm doing, and you'll notice when I do the teachings uh, with my video lectures, I'm trying to, yes, I got to give you the foundations, the nuts and bolts. But you're going to see quite often that I'm going to throw in a lot of how to apply this material. I'm going to get your brains wired for what these other nursing schools or radiology schools or uh, physician assistants, physical therapies, pre-med, whichever, they're getting you into that mode that you got to apply this material. And I'm going to start doing that with you. I will use a lot of diseases in this. Um, I believe that if you, you do need to know the normal anatomy, you do need to know the normal physiology, but to emphasize it, I got to give you a disease. What if we remove this part of the anatomy? Then how would that person present? Ah, then that's what multiple sclerosis is, or that's what uh, muscular dystrophy is. Now it makes sense. So basically me giving you diseases, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it or much detail of it, just enough to show why knowing the normal anatomy and the physiology is significant, okay? So anyway, that's a little bit about me. I want to go now go back into the into the syllabus. And I wanted to just tell you a couple things really fast. The syllabus is pretty lengthy. It's about 35 pages or so. The first, uh, first few pages, the first 10 pages or so is what we refer to as the uh, departmental, um, the departmental syllabus. Okay. My part uh, in that first 10, uh, 10 or so pages is telling you all the stuff that every anatomy and physiology um, course in, at CCM is going to follow. Like the, what the grades are, um, what, expect, what, what you're expecting to do. It tells you a little bit about um, percentages, about lectures and labs. Yeah, so take a look at that. I'm not going to talk about that. It's pretty straightforward. What I'm going to talk to you about is something, and I'm sorry, it's not in uh, color. I didn't make this in color, but you should see a yellow box up here. It's about page 11 or so, and that's where I'm going to start talking. Now, the first two pages is the introduction. 
Um, and I really don't want to go into that. It's, it's really light and fluffy. I think you can read that on your own a little bit about what to expect uh, in a down to earth uh, way of talking about it in anatomy and physiology. Um, and it also talks about taking an online course or a summer course, an accelerated course. Um, so you have to just think about that too, whether you're taking this course in the summer, or if you're taking this course as an accelerated course, whether it's 10 weeks or seven weeks, as opposed to the usual 15 weeks in the fall or spring, there's going to be a lot more pressure on you, right? Really a, more of a demand for you to uh, stay with create that, that schedule and stick with it, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is the course calendar, okay? Now, I, this I have in color. The course calendar is over here. The first few pages is going to deal with just the calendar itself, the number of months that are there and what's all there. Um, the last few couple pages or so is more of a checklist. The checklist here is a wonderful thing because what I did was the first column is a place where if you want to put a check for yourself, the second one is when the date opens for that assignment, whether it's going to be the, um, the lab report or a quiz or an exam or whichever it is. The third column is going to be the due date. Now, I put all this together in a chronological order by due date. I had to come up with something, and I think it was easier to say when it's due, that's the order that I'm putting it in, okay? Then I have the actual event or the course assignment is over here, whether it's a quiz, exam, discussion board, anything like that, lab report. And a little bit about that. What is going to be included into that, okay? Just a little note over there. What I recommend, this is probably, I wouldn't say this is the most important thing. I think it's equally as important as your syllabus. You'll find it in the uh, uh, course, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Blackboard uh, area. I'll show you where that will be located if you need to print it out. Um, but everything is over here. I kind of put everything in green and blue that's going to be lecture. And anything that's going to be pink or brown is going to be uh lab uh, incorporated. Uh, anything that's yellow, basically, besides the word dues, um, anything yellow is really a like a course information, like when is withdrawal day, if the school is closed, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is called the course calendar. Definitely print this out. Use this as your guide. The syllabus itself is lengthy. We're going to go through it all. It's about 35 pages in total with the first 10 or so pages that are going to be departmental. I'm not going to start with that. I'm going to start with um, just after the introduction, which is around page 13 or so. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to switch off over here, go back to the PowerPoint, and we're going to go right through there. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So uh, the first thing, as I mentioned to you, is something called an entering survey or questionnaire. Okay. It's it's so that I can better acquaint myself with your background now that I went through everything about mine. Um, it's very easy to do. It probably only takes five minutes to do to send it to me. Um, do it online. Uh, well, not online, but do it. Uh, you'll see where it is. It's in the syllabus folder. I'll show you where that is when I introduce you or help navigate the uh, uh, Blackboard. I want you to download it, uh, complete it, and then save it. Um, once you save it, I would save it in a different file name. Use your name. I think that's, I think the, it just says entering survey questionnaire, but if you just change the file name to John Smith, um, and save it like that, that's fine. And then email it to me, try and do this on day number one. Okay. That's what that is. Um, now course description, um, this is really a anatomy and physiology is really part one of a huge, a huge course itself. Try not to think of this um, as, you have to always keep this in mind that it's not a 15 week course, or if you take it in a seven week course or a 10 week course, but what you have to double that. It's, you're only gonna get the first part. And I'll be honest with you, you're only gonna be doing four body systems out of probably around 11 or 12 different body systems. Depends on how people put things together. Is it the cardiac and vascular systems being two systems, or is it the cardio cardiovascular system? So there's certain things that we can combine. So 
make sure you understand uh, you're only going to get one part of this. Um, so whatever you're going to learn in anatomy and physiology one in this course, you need to remember to use because they're going to expect you to know that that information for anatomy and physiology two. OK, uh, and this really is going to be your foundation if you're going to nursing, radiology, uh, physical therapy and so forth. So um, this is uh, a very demanding course. Um, but, yeah, you need to uh, be able to uh, hold on to this. Also, think of anatomy and physiology as a manual about yourself. I mean, when you get a car, one of the first things you want to do, a new car, it's like, wow, look at this, this stereo system. And you want to get the manual because you want to see what all the features that it does. Well, that's basically what we're doing over here is that you've learned that you do pee, you do breathe, you do poop, you do... Uh, cut yourself and you bleed. Well, why does all of that happen? That's what we're going to be finding out in these two courses, Anatomy and Physiology 1 and 2. Why? What makes us breathe? What makes our, uh, you know, if we cut ourselves, what makes the blood come out? Um, why do we get sick? What is it? So we're going to learn about that. So think of it as a manual about yourself. Okay. And like I said, this is a highly condensed course. If you take it in the summer, usually in 10 weeks in the summer and something called early start. Um, and that's usually a seven week course. Uh, again, the normal week is, is the normal semester is a 15 week course. OK, um, and it's just added more um, uh, stress for you uh, when it's an online course because you have to come up with your own um, things of when things should be due. OK, um, I know I gave you a due date for Saturday, but, you know, you have a barbecue on Saturday. So, you know that you're going to have to get this done on Friday. Right. You have to set up your own kind of thing. I will be emailing you quite often uh, throughout the, the semester. OK, uh, usually uh, definitely every Sunday. There's no doubt about that, about what the week is going to be like. Um, and I usually will email you on Thursday as a checking in thing, but don't think that I'm not going to email you through the, in between those days, uh, between Sunday and Thursday and Thursday and Sunday, you will get, you will definitely know that I'm still present there because I will be sending you probably anywhere from three to 10 emails just to gauge you, just to let you know what's going on, um, your little reminders and so forth. OK. OK, so the way we look at anatomy and physiology one, it's really two portions. The first third of it is what we refer to as the basics, the terminology that we use for anatomy, chemistry, because our bodies are if we really go all the way down, it doesn't go down to just the cell. But what makes up a cell is chemistry, right? With carbon dioxide, oxygen, sodium, potassium and so forth. So we need to talk at least one chapter in chemistry and then we're going to get into cytology which is the cell we'll learn a little bit about genetics um and then what about when cells start gluing together and making what we refer to as tissues well the study of tissues is something we refer to as histology so we're going to do that too okay then the last two thirds we're going to go into the systems the integumentary system or dermatology or just simply skin, uh, that's kind of a, a very small one to deal with. So that's a nice one to start off with. Uh, but then we're going to get into the skeletal system with the bones and then we're going to muscular system and the nervous system. If you look in your textbook, it's about five or six chapters. It's huge. Um, and by the time the, the semester ends, we would have done um, everything with nervous system, but there's no more time to do anything else. When we get into A and P2, it is more like a bullet train because it's going to be system after system after system. And the chronology, hematology, cardiology, all the way down to the reproductive systems. And yes, as I told you before, you need to remember you have to take good notes, understand this stuff. Don't do it for the test. Don't study for just the test. You need to study for A and P2 to keep this in your head. Um, and then for A&P2, you need to know all of that when you get into your other your other school that you're going to be doing, whether it's going to be nursing school or um, medical school or so forth. OK. 
Now, taking an online course, there are five requirements. And again, I'm following everything uh, now in the syllabus if you want to follow along. So there are five requirements uh, for online. Uh, some of these are common sense, but I do need to put in a few other uh, features to it uh, just to emphasize things. So yes, you do need a digital device. A laptop, desktop, or Chromebooks can be used for everything. However, do not use your smartphones or tablets for exams, quizzes, or what we refer to as mastering A and P, which is going to be the lab component of uh, the Blackboard. Um, so yes, you could use the uh, smartphones for um, uh, for uh, anything else. Watch my videos if you want to do the questions, if you want to just explore a little bit uh, of the uh of Blackboard, if you need to do your discussion boards, yes, you could use all that, okay, with, with tablets and, and smartphones. The internet access, yes, you do need to have that, all right? Um, a, cu a couple caveats with it, though. You need good Wi-Fi connectivity. My suggestion is, especially when you come to, when it comes down to exams and quizzes, I think you should be close to the router that's in your house. Now, the, what is the router? As some of you are already asking. Um, a modem is actually in your computer, okay? Uh, and it connects wirelessly with your router that's in your house. The router is that blocks that has the, bl it's, it's that blinking box that's in your house. If you um, are closer to that, um, then that you're gonna have a nice strong connectivity. Also mind that there could be internet traffic in your house, uh, meaning that if you only have, let's say, 25 megabytes per second, and you got to check to see what how much you have, because I'm going to talk about that in a second, uh, see what's coming into your house. But you need to have, if you have 25 megabytes per second, well, what if your sister is doing homework on the computer for an online course from for high school, your mother's watching Netflix, your father is trying to figure out what to do with that certain part of his car, um, so he's looking something on YouTube and your brother's playing games. Well, if you have 25 megabytes per second, all of that, especially games and videos, Netflix included, that's probably going to use about 15, 20, close to 25 megabytes per second, okay? So you do need to be aware of internet traffic, okay? You might want to take your, your exams and quizzes when there's not so much of this traffic going on. The other thing that I need you to be aware of is that you need a strong connection coming to your house. You need at least 15 megabytes per second, okay? Again, you need to check to see what your, um, whether you're using cable, DSL with the phone, or whatever your uh, internet service is, check on the bill, give them a call, and see how much megabytes per second. Now, when I say 25 megabytes per, per second, that sounds like, well, you have a lot. Yes, but it gets cut down if you have internet traffic. The reason why you need the strong connection, I've had situations last semester where Students were taking an exam that was being proctored by a service that we're going to be talking about called Smarter, um, Smarter Proctoring. They got booted off. It froze because you have to have at least 15 megabytes per second that is devoted to the exam. OK, um, when that happens, uh, you get kicked off and you can't get to do the exam again. All right. Um, if you show me all that, I might make certain exceptions, but if you don't, if you have this internet and if it happens often, uh, I'm not going to be too happy with that when you keep on doing it. My suggestion is to find another place uh, to take this. You can come to campus and find a, uh, you don't have to, but I'm just saying a camp, the campus has like a probably about 300 megabytes per second over there. You could be any place around there, especially inside. You could take the exams on in, in the library. You could take it in uh, the cafeteria. You go to another place like Panera or Starbucks to take the exams. They're, pr they're pretty high with megabytes per second too. So do plan accordingly. Don't wait to the last minute when something is due, when you have, let's say, you know, seven days or three days to do this exam because 
um, it's it's just you know I, I might not be too friendly when it comes to you're waited to the last minute and you know uh, I might not see your email until like the next day so um just make sure that you go to a place that has a strong uh connection with uh, uh your internet okay you can only use google chrome do not use internet explorer internet explorer edge firefox believe it or not and for apple users safari um, we found out that there's certain things that, um, well, taking the exams, it only works with Google Chrome and the story about that. But there has been also situations where you're sending or you're submitting certain things and you're using Firefox or Safari, we're just not getting them. So just do yourself a favor, just get Google Chrome. Even if you're an Apple user, you could just download, download a Google Chrome and just, um, bookmark the uh, the blackboard that I'm gonna show you and just put it into Google Chrome, okay? Uh, the third thing you're gonna need is a webcam with a microphone, okay? When you use our um, proctoring service called Smarter Proctoring, okay, um, they will be needing to hear things. I, I need to hear, they need to hear, is there anyone saying anything to you? You know, if you're reading things off, I have no problems with you reading things off as you're reading the, the questions. But I've had situations where you're reading a question, a red blood cell is also known as, and then someone else is saying, it's also an erythrocyte. Oh, erythrocyte? Okay. And then you start writing it down. So we need to hear everything that's going on there. And obviously that would be called cheating, right? Um, but yes, we've had situations like that. So you got to have a webcam on your computer. It doesn't have to be a part of your computer. It could be a separate webcam itself. Okay. Um, and any virtual appointments in case you want to uh, have an office hour with me or you want to just talk with me through a Zoom session. Yes, we, you're going to need the microphone anyway. Okay. Keep the webcam positioned on the top of your screen for all proctor exams. That's what they expect. They do not want it on either side of your screen. Okay. It will ask you during an exam to pan the uh, your webcam 360 degrees so that I get a full view of your surroundings, that there's nothing, uh, there's no pictures or diagrams or notes that are taped to your wall um, that would aid you for the exam, okay? So it will ask you um, before taking the exam uh, to do this panning that's 360 degrees. You have to do this 360 degree panning. If you do not, you'll be disqualified for that exam. Now, I do understand that some of the, if you're using a desktop computer and the webcam is a part of the screen, it's very difficult to pick that up. And if you can pick it up and do, and, and do like a 360, that's fine. But if you can't, email me as soon as possible. I'll come up, I'll have to do a Zoom session with you. Um, not the time that you have to do the exam. Do this before. We want to have this meeting before so that we can come up with some kind of plan of how I'm going to see their surroundings. I've had situations where uh, a student can use their cell phone. And as long as I could see what's pictured on the cell phone, he was actually panning the area with the computer um, of the computer and the surroundings with the cell phone. Um, I've actually had a, a, someone bring out a, uh, a mirror. So they were actually showing the mirror in front of the webcam and tilting it to either side so that I could see through the mirror to see what the area is. But don't do these things until you email me because I want to see how it looks so that you know how to present it. So uh, I would imagine it's only for a few students that would do it this way. I think most students have a webcam that they could take off and just do the three, 360 degrees. Um, and this, like I said, it reassures me and your classmates uh, that everybody's doing the same procedure, okay? All exams will be video recorded. Um, I should always be on the monitor. Um, it upholds that integrity issue. No exam or quiz is open book, and you may not be able to visit other websites during exams. If you try to do that, um, like Google or other things, um, I will be alerted, and I will consider that cheating, okay? 
The fourth thing, uh, pretty easy on this one, is that you need a photo ID. Whether you're, I would imagine everyone's got their CCM school ID, but if you don't have that, um, it's in the car and you forgot it to bring it in, you can use any government issued photo ID, like your, um, uh, your driver's license is, is a good example of that, okay? Um, the full name must match what I have on your course roster of what CCM has, okay? So if you just got married, you got divorced, and you change your name, it has to be the same one, okay? Also make sure that it, it did not expire if you're using a, a driver's license, all right? It's going, the Smarter Proctoring is going to prompt you to show this photo, make sure it snaps a picture, don't move it all around and get blurry because, um, I have to then ask you to show the ID again at another later time, okay? The fifth thing um, is the lab kit, okay? Now, this is ordered directly from Carolina Bi Biological Supplies. I emailed everyone a few weeks ago before day one uh, would occur um, so that they can order, or I'm sorry, yeah, they can order and get the lab kit uh, before classes began. Um, the lab kit, um, sh you should get it by the end of this week. If not, the end um, sometime during next week is when you should have it. We're not really going to use anything until maybe two-thirds into the, the course. There really is only a few things in there. There's going to be a dissecting kit, goggles, gloves, lab apron, and then there's going to be two specimens in there um, that are in bags, uh, a sheep brain and a cow eye. OK, obviously, you can open up the box to make sure that everything is there. But do not, I repeat, do not open the brain or the cow's eye. Just keep them in their bags. I'll let you know when we um, need to use those. OK, um, best place to and if you don't have those things or you get the box and you and you're missing certain things, you need to contact Carolina and let them know. They're usually pretty good at um uh, sending you whatever was missing or something that was broken or something like that, okay? The best place to store this is at a room temperature area. It does not have to be refrigerated, although you can keep it in a refrigerator. I don't think your family members would appreciate that. Um, they don't really smell um, if they're kept in the bags, but Nobody wants to have that touching uh, their jello that's in there too, okay? Um, but the other, the good place to put it is don't keep it outside because during the winter months or during the summer months, uh, the different temperatures is not going to be too good, let alone there's little critters that may want to eat those uh, specimens. Um, the best place, I think, is, is probably in your garage um, where the temperature is going to be just a little bit um under room temperature um or it'll be room temperature so i think that uh maybe that would be a best place for you to put it okay um after you dissect these items don't dispose of anything until i'll instruct you and, and you'll see with emails okay so those are the five things that you need to have okay then we have the objectives. The objectives are not so much are going to be in my section of the syllabus, but will be in the first 10 or so pages of the departmental. Refer to the syllabus, read those on your own. They're pretty straightforward. Now the course information. Um, there is prerequisites. Um, basically right now we just have certain math um, uh, courses that you need to have or its equivalents. The class dates, again, look on that page that's uh, at the top that says course information, and you will see the dates, uh, the beginning and ending dates of this. It is for credits. Um, the exams, quizzes, lab reports, the days will and times and uh, will vary about when these are due and when these things take place. Obviously, you'll be doing it at a remote venue at your choosing, whether you want to do it at Starbucks, you want to do it at home, wherever you want to do it. You could do it on campus, too. It's up to you. Again, my name's uh, Dr. Gamaro. Um, office hours, really just email me. Um, I check my email quite often, probably two to three times a day, every day. And I don't care if it's uh, those good days like Super Bowl Day um, or even Valentine's Day. 
my wife isn't too happy with that. But I, I don't like to have 10 emails there. So I like to check it often. Um, so if if I can't answer your question through a, an email, then we can set up a Zoom session um, together that is conducive for both of us. And, um, you know, we could we could chat on that. And I could do it on Saturdays, Sundays, um, even on a holiday, if, if that's something that's conducive for you also. OK, um, the contact information, let me just go down to the uh, bottom part over here, uh, the Blackboard area. Something called Blackboard, the abbreviation of Blackboard is capital B, lowercase b, Blackboard Mail. This is the only place, and I'm going to show you, this is the only place that you and I are going to communicate. Do not use this escamaro at ccm.edu. I know that's what you were doing. If you were emailing me prior to day one of the course, yes, I was doing the same thing too, but that was because Blackboard was not open yet. But now that Blackboard's over, uh, open, then I want you to do it there. I don't want anybody to email me ever during the, into this CCM email because your mail will get lost with my other email as much as my email will probably get lost with all of your other email in there. You have other classes with uh, that are sending emails that way. You're getting stuff from the college. I'm getting stuff from the college. I'm getting stuff from advertisements, from the Pearson book and all this stuff. I think what's most important to me is your emails. So when you go to the, our Blackboard course, I'm going to show you where the Blackboard mail is. There will only be my emails to you and your emails to me, and that is it. There is no other fluff uh, that is going to go in there. So it is clean. I could just do it through there, okay? So definitely... Um, email me over here. I'm going to be emphasizing it quite often during this uh, lecture. Um, if for some reason you're not getting in touch with me, you, got it, you need to get a fast um, um, response. You can always call up the faculty offices. Again, they're only open if the school is open. Uh, they have my personal phone number and they can get in touch with me that way. Okay. Uh, but avoid this CCM email. I will avoid it with you. I want you and I to only use the Blackboard mail, and I'll show you where that is. So just a very quick um, review about the five requirements. You need a digital device. Again, desktop, laptop, or Chromebook are the best thing to use for everything. Smartphones and tablets only use for a few different things, not for exams. The internet access, make sure you have a strong connection. Do call up your internet service, whether it's cable or DSL with the phone, whatever you're using, make sure you have at least 15 megabytes per second, but also be mindful of the internet traffic because you have 15 megabytes per second coming in, but if your mother's watching uh, Netflix and your brother is playing video games, that might now be down to five megabytes per second, which means you cannot take the lecture exams or any of the exams on there, okay? Um, only use Google Chrome. All those other browsers are not compatible with a lot on Blackboard. Make sure you have a webcam with a working microphone, your photo ID, and the lab kit, okay? Now, Really fast, I'm gonna go more into detail about this. I've already mentioned a little bit about smarter proctoring, but just some notes. This is a 24 seven online proctoring service, meaning you could take the exam at three o'clock in the morning. You could take it on Christmas morning if you wanted, holidays and weekends and time of the day does not matter, okay? You could only use Google Chrome. Um, you're going to need to download and install something called an extension into your browser. Again, Google Chrome is the only way to use this. You'll be able to do this when you first take something that is going to use Smarter Proctoring, whether the practice quiz, which I'll talk about later, or the syllabus quiz. Before you take one of these, it will um, prompt you to make an account and to download this extension. Once you do that, you're good 
at least for that computer. If you have to switch over to another computer for a different uh, for for another exam in the future, you might have to do this process over again because it's not installed in that other computer. Let's say your your one computer is in the shop, it doesn't work. Well, then you got to borrow your mother's computer. That that kind of situation. Okay, um, the instructions for all this will be in the Blackboard course, which I'll show you. Uh, we also use Mastering A and P. All right, um, this is where you're going to do most of your online lab experiments. Um, if you have any questions about it, you could go to the masteringamp.com area. But the only place to register this um, is on Blackboard. I've integrated um, our Blackboard course with Mastering AMP. Okay, do this on day number one, and I'll show you how to go about doing that when I show you the, um, the Blackboard. If you've had this before, this is like your second time taking this course. Um, if you've had something called an access code, if you had something that was going to be, let's say, 18 months, it may still be in function. It hasn't expired yet. However, if it's going to expire during this semester, or if it already has expired prior to today, you're going to have to repurchase another access code. You can either do a subscription of 18 weeks or 18 months. My suggestion is to do the 18 months uh, if you plan on taking A and P2, okay? Um, it's going to be a little bit cheaper to do the 18 months overall than the 18-week one, okay? All right, so the textbooks that's in conjunction with this course, uh, we have the Anatomy and Physiology uh, written by Marib. Uh, this is the 11th edition from 2019. Now, I'm going to tell you right away, you do not have to get the latest edition, okay? If you want to save a few bucks and you want to get the 9th edition, you can do that, okay? Or if you had this book um, in, um, in another college, that's fine, okay? Um, but yes, you, you can use, because everything in the exams and quizzes are going to be based off of my video lectures, my PowerPoints, or applying what is in these two resources. The textbook is going to be good for another resource should you be confused or you need to solidify a certain material from my lecture or my PowerPoint, and you have a go-to place to go to. As you know, using Google, when you wanna do that, you might get too much information or too little information, let alone all the different um, uh, items that advertisements and stuff that could be distractions. If you have a textbook that you can go to, then that's perfect, okay? Um, just a word of advice, uh, if you, when you order the Mastering a and and you link it using your access code, there is an option where you could get the e-text for this. So I also encourage you to do that if, if you're a person that likes to use the computer. But again, you could only use it if you could get into Blackboard, okay? The lab manual, you don't have to buy. It is included with the um, with the Blackboard. I'll show you where to find it. It's about 100 pages or so. I would not uh, print out the 100 pages. Go with whatever you need to do. Look at the look at it on a, as a with your digital device. Uh, you might only want to print out a few pages in each of the units. Okay, but I'll give you some uh, tips as we go along with each one of these lab things. So it is a part of this, what we call, um, you also use the Mastering a and internet service that you have to hook up with, okay? All right, so with that said, why don't we go on to uh, and have me show you what uh, Blackboard is all about. We'll get back to this in a second, but I wanna actually show you Blackboard and help navigate and explore it with you, okay?